Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my uh, colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up regi repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing pa Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced. What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil? What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position is to reject military intervention and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security, that it never changes from one administration to the next? What if war and preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded? Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time. I've been purchasing gold and silver from JM Bullion since before they were a show sponsor because they have the lowest price of any dealer I know of. JM Bullion now offers free shipping on all orders. Check them out online today at jmbullion.com. American Reset, the long-awaited conclusion of the Economic Collapse Chronicles, is now available. In Book 3, the ultimate contest between liberty and tyranny reaches the apex. The Bear family and their neighbors fight to survive the fallout of the meltdown and cling to the principles in the Constitution. Will the collapse bring an oppressive regime that enslaves the American people, or will the patriots prevail and guide the country back to freedom, peace, and prosperity? Get your copy in Kindle, audio, or paperback on Amazon today. Hey Preppers and Patriots, it's been a little while since we did a reader mailbag, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, I've got a couple of letters from... Uh, some listeners and some folks that have been reading the Economics Collapse Chronicles. The first letter is from Teresa. Teresa writes, I really enjoyed reading your first book and just began the second book. There's a lot of good information that I'm finding of great use and am writing down. My main question is the purchase of silver and gold coins. I know these are just novels. However, I read much about the importance of actually purchasing the coins now before it's too late. I've been researching silver coins in bags pre-1965 
and need your guidance. Is there really a need to buy these coins? Is our economy actually going to crash? I've talked to my financial advisor and he thinks I'm crazy to waste money on actual coins. He's telling me to invest in precious metal stocks. No matter what he says, I'm still considering buying silver coins. I just don't know how much to purchase and where. Hope you can help. Thank you, Teresa. Well, Teresa, um, is the economy going to crash? Nobody really knows. It's sort of been on this bad decline, though, for several years. And uh, we saw what almost happened in 2008. And we came really, really close to a precipice of a complete economic meltdown and a complete loss of our our total financial system. Um, Could that happen again? I think that all the energy is built up in the system to trigger that type of an event. And I I think that it's something that could happen. It's sort of like, do I know if I'm going to get in a car wreck? I really, I don't have a crystal ball and I can't say for sure whether I'm going to get in a car wreck, but I know that the chances of having a car wreck are not zero. And that makes me want to have car insurance. And that's sort of how I look at gold and silver because they've always been, they've always been money. Um, I've mentioned several times on the show before, Genesis 13, 2 says that Abraham was wealthy in cattle and silver and gold. And if you'll notice what's missing in that verse, it doesn't say anything about U.S. dollars. Why? Well, because the U.S. dollar has only been around in its current totally fiat form since 1971 when we closed the gold window. Uh, At that point, it was still partially backed by by, by gold. But ever since 1971, it's been backed by absolutely nothing. Well, maybe I shouldn't say absolutely nothing. I guess we could say that it's a lead-backed dollar because we do have the largest military in the world. And anytime a country decides that they don't want to sell their oil in U.S. dollars anymore, anymore they, they tend to get invaded. Uh, that happened in Libya. It happened in Iraq. Um, we talk about promoting democracy and uh, and helping the rest of the world be as free as we are, but uh, that doesn't seem to apply to Saudi Arabia, which is a very very oppressive state. Where if you're a Muslim and you convert to Christianity, you could be killed. Um, women aren't allowed to drive, and uh, there's absolutely no Bibles allowed in the country whatsoever. So uh, it's it's a little inconsistent. If that's what we're trying to do is promote democracy, it sounds to me like it's much more about resources, but uh, I'm kind of getting off on a a tangent and uh, chasing rabbits here. So let's get back to uh, silver and gold. Yes, uh, I I think that it's a good idea to have it. Uh, And and I'm not a financial advisor. And like you said, you do have one. Uh, Does that mean because they've got that piece of paper on the wall that they have a crystal ball? No, I don't think so. But uh, it's a great idea to have some some insurance in case something like that happens. And and I can only speak to what's right for me since I'm not a financial advisor. But uh, I like to try to have 10% of my total liquid assets in silver and gold. And even if we just look at silver and gold from the course of uh, 1933 when we got completely quit using gold as currency – Ever since Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued Executive Order 6102 and essentially tried to confiscate the gold of the American people and give them paper instead of their gold, the the value of that paper that they got in return has been going down and down and down. So even if we don't have an economic collapse, if we just see what's happened for the, the past 80 years – uh, that depreciation of the paper currency and the ability of gold and silver to continue to hold their value against that paper, uh, I, I still think it's a good idea that to just have some. And where? And of course, uh, I, I've said it several times before, uh, I was buying gold and silver from JM Bullion since before they were a show sponsor, and that's not just product placement. It's not just a, a plug for them. It's it's the honest truth, and it's where I still buy my gold and silver from, and I, I buy from them on a regular basis. I've never had a problem with them. Uh, I did have to set up a, an account for my mom the other day, and it took me a little while to, to get the account set up, and I think what it is is just when you're setting up the account – 
it takes a little time for your information to to propagate in their system. So if you try to set up an account and you're not able to order right away, try setting up the account and then and then coming back a half an hour later and then and then trying to place finish placing the order. That might work a little bit better for you. It did for us. Um, and of course, that could have just been a one-off. It might be something that doesn't doesn't normally happen. Uh, the process usually you're going to um, pick out the items that you want and and shop around too. Uh, before I before I was using JM Bullion, I was using Atmex, and I never had a problem with Atmex either. They have they have very good prices. It's just that JM has uh, they've got free shipping, and on most all of their items, they beat they beat Atmex and. Uh, before JM, Atmix was uh, – they were the cheapest online dealer that I could find. And the online dealers are usually going to be cheaper than the brick-and-mortar stores because the brick-and-mortar stores, they've got to pay – they've got to pay uh, – they've got to have a business license for, for the, the county. They've got to have – they've got to pay rent. They've got to pay electricity. They've got to pay all those things for that storefront as opposed to somebody that just has a computer, takes a computer order and stores everything in a warehouse. And it's, they have a lot lower rent. And uh, probably less regulatory fees. They probably don't have to have uh, slip and fall liability insurance in case uh, some litigious person walks into their store and decides that uh, a gold and silver shop would be a great place to to fall down and uh, and, and sue somebody. So they don't have to have that. Um, there's probably a lot of expenses that they're able to save by being an online dealer. The, the good thing about a brick and mortar store is that you can walk right in there and walk out that same day with your product. The thing with an online dealer, usually you're going to place your order, and this is true with JM, this is true with Atmex, and probably any of the other reputable dealers out there. And there's some swindlers out there too. Uh, my sister went to Lear, and if you just directly ordered through from Lear, Online, they, they had pretty good prices, but if you call them and you talk to a sales rep, somehow you you get a whole different price schedule, and uh, it's something to do with with uh, the sales rep getting a uh, a commission or something. So when she called them, she got in a completely different price than what she had gotten before from just uh, ordering from them. So uh, I just stay away from them. Anybody that doesn't want to give you the price online for you to be able to go and, and compare, anytime you have to call somebody to pay, place an online order, uh, red flags go up for me. So I just stay away from anywhere that I've got a call. Um, but uh, like I said, JM, Atmex, both, what you're going to do is place your order. Then you're going to uh, mail them a check. Uh, it'll usually take you know, three to four days for the check to arrive. Then they'll deposit that in their account. Most dealers are going to hold the check for 10 days to make sure it's not going to bounce. And then they'll start to process your order. So the entire turnaround time from the time you push the, the button to, to place the order until you receive your medals could be up to a month. So that's the only downside. But uh, if you've got the patience, it is usually going to be cheaper than going through a, a brick and mortar store. The next letter comes from Jeremy and Jeremy writes, Hey Mark, I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan of your books. I heard you on a recent episode of the Armed Squirrels Project. Ended up being so interested in the books, I listened to both of them on tape before finishing that episode of the podcast. I recently got into prepping after a natural disaster hit here a year ago and I saw what my National Guard unit was mobilized to help control. Seeing what I did then gave goosebumps to me at a certain point in your books. They're extremely well written and kept me on the edge of my seat. I can't wait for number three. My mind is still racing with ideas of what will happen next. I just started listening to your podcast and am definitely a new fan there as well. The only improvement I would like to see is your mic output bumped up a bit. Your voice does get a bit soft. Thank you for such great content. Jeremy. Well, Jeremy, first I'd like to say thank you for your service with the National Guard and uh, doing what you – putting your life on the line to keep folks safe and uh, help out with that disaster. But we really do appreciate that and we appreciate all the troops out there for, for what you do. I know it's not easy and it's a big sacrifice and thanks a lot. And I've been working on the audio. Uh, I hope everything's starting to sound a little bit better. Uh, like I said, I got a new board. Uh, never played with a soundboard before in my life. 
have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, I think I've got all the right cables plugged in because evidently we have a show, uh, and now it's just kind of uh, playing with these knobs. So uh, bear with me, and uh, it's like everything else, whether it's gardening or putting together a solar panel kit or uh, purchasing gold and silver online, <laughs> there's a learning curve involved. So uh, just bear with me, and hopefully we'll have these these uh, output levels all pretty normalized within the next couple of months and for everybody that's uh, been purchasing through the amazon link on preparecon.com i appreciate that and that's the money that i use to purchase the board and the mic and the recorder and all of that stuff so a big thanks to everybody that's uh, helped support the show by doing that the next letter is from kathy kathy writes i just wanted to write really quickly and say your audio sounds great now You've had some great speakers lately, and I'm excited about the Summer of Survival. Such a great lineup, and I see you're included in that too. I think your seven-step plan is nice and simple, and it's a great way for someone who's been skimming the surface to get started. I just passed it along to my sister, hoping to get her more interested. Two quick questions if you don't mind. When is your next book coming out? And I'm looking for some info on converting some fiat trash to gold and silver. Have you done a podcast or any resources on how to tell the reputable firms from the crooks out there? Tips on best transaction policies. Save money by using your bank account or don't do that, etc. I know JM Bullion is a show sponsor. I'm just hesitating since I plan to hopefully convert a large chunk here in the next few months. I hear tons of podcasts and read articles about needing to do it, but there aren't any out there that actually talk you through it. Just thought I'd ask. A sincere thank you for all that you do and the great info you provide. Your book was the catalyst for me to wake up to what was happening in the economy and really start paying attention. I hope you you reach many, many others this way. Thanks, Kathy. That just, uh, that's that's why I do this is because of people like that that tell me that that those books were part of the catalyst of why they woke up. And that's my mission. I just, I want to get as many people as possible to wake up. I always encourage people to share the show. You know, you can download it, put it on a flash drive, give it to a friend, and say, "Hey, listen to this." And uh, and that's that's why I do the podcast. That's why I write the books, and and that's my mission is to try to get as many people to wake up to the need to prepare as possible because we'll have a much better world uh, post collapse with the more people that that are prepared. First question was, when's the next book going to be out? Well, it's out. Uh, For most of you that are hearing this, uh, if you're listening to the show and it just came out, the audio is probably not out yet, but it is in production and it'll be out within the next couple of weeks. So uh, book three is out. So uh, you can go over to Amazon and it's called American Reset for everybody that's, that's not familiar with it yet. The series title for new listeners or anyone that's not familiar with it, it's called the Economic Collapse Chronicles, and it does uh, it's the it follows a a Florida couple that uh, find out that they're not as prepared as they thought they were, and the crash comes and they have to relocate to a more remote area of the country, which uh, ends up being in the mountains of Kentucky, and the the government, like they always do, step in and use the the excuse of the economic collapse to come in and institute more control, just like we saw in every every time there's a natural or a man-made disaster, we see this type of uh, behavior from our government. Uh, after Katrina, we saw them come in and do door-to-door gun confiscations. After 9-11, we got the Patriot Act, and, and we keep getting more and more oppressive uh, legislation from that with 9-11 being the excuse, we've got now the NDAA, indefinite detention clause, that allows our government to lock people up with, without charging them uh, and, uh, and hold them without, without bail, which that's a, that's a constitutional amendment violation, um, and hold them indefinitely so with no release date and, and without charging them. So that's, it's just a, an abomination, the NDAA. Uh, indefinite detention clause. Um, after the Boston bombing, man-made disaster there, we saw we saw the police go house to house, kicking in doors, looking for this 19-year-old kid and dragging 70-year-old women out in the street with their hands on their head. Uh, it's it's very very obvious that the that these 
people were not the 19 year old kid that they were looking for, but yet they still treated all of these people like criminals, ran them down to the end of the street and frisked them to as if if they would have been armed, there would have been some crime committed there. These people should have been armed. They've got some terrorists running around in their neighborhood. They should have been armed at that time. And, uh, and nobody did anything about it. You know, we they the the, the people of that community should have picketed the the police station until the the police chief stepped down and everybody uh, that participated in that raid was was brought up on criminal charges. Everybody involved in that should have went to jail, but uh, that's not what people do. They just they tend to just uh, go back to watching Dancing with the Stars and American Idol and forget all about it. But um, once again, I'm going off on another rabbit trail. So let's get back to the next part of that question. Have you done a podcast or any resources on how to tell the reputable firms from the crooks out there? Tips on best transaction policies. I think I just covered that a little bit in the last the the last letter. Uh, anybody that's making you call in, uh, it's probably it's probably some kind of bait and switch thing, and and you're not able to you're not able to go and compare. So most of the reputable places you're going to be able to go and you're going to be able to click on Atmex and you're going to be able to look at their price for an American Silver Eagle. And then you can toggle over to JM Bullion and look at their price for an American Silver Eagle. Uh, like I said, they're all going to take about a month by the time you, you, you click your order till the time you actually receive your gold. Um, and if you, if you don't want to trust somebody for that long and you just want to get it, uh, you, you probably have local coin dealers in your area. Uh, and it's like I said, they've got it. They got to pay rent and still make a profit. So they're probably going to be a little more expensive. But you know what? Just go over there and, and check them out just to get a, an idea of, of how big of a price difference it is. And, you know, you might have somebody really, really good in your area that's uh, that's got some good deals. So, you know, go check out the, the brick and mortar places around your house. Kathy also said that she's going to be converting a large chunk in the next few months. And you'll always hear me say, you know, break them up. Do a couple of thousand this month and then do a couple more thousand after that order arrives. This uh, this allows you to dollar cost average so that if you have wild swings in the in the metals market like what we've been seeing lately, it'll allow if it goes down, then it allows you to get more at a lower price. And if it goes up, then uh, it sort of it just breaks up your risk a little bit so that uh if it if it does go down lower, then then you don't lose so much. But uh, like I've said in the past, I don't really look at it as losing because to me, silver and gold it's an insurance policy. So you know I've still got that insurance policy, regardless of what the the nominal amount may say. And uh, I also say a lot that uh, the production cost the production cost of silver is uh, close to twenty five dollars per ounce. So at the levels right now, we'll probably get a supply crunch if the price doesn't go back up to where the the miners and uh, silver producers are are able to stay in business and make a profit. So reader mailbag, you guys keep sending me letters. Keep uh, you can post the comments on prepperrecon dot com or you can email me at prepperrecon at gmail dot com. And ever so often, we'll pull them out of the mailbag and read a couple of them. Thanks so much for listening. Our individual first aid kits are now on sale. They're Molly compatible pouches in Coyote, ACU, OD, or Black. They're equipped with an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, TK4 tourniquet, suture kit, and lots of extras. It's perfect for your car, bug out bag, or home first aid kit. Go to the PrepperRecon.com homepage and click on the IFAC store tab at the top of the page. They're on sale for $89, and that includes shipping. This kit could save.